This guide is for Gods Unchained players who are either new to the game or if you're a beginner to intermediate player who isn't really hitting Mythic very often, maybe you're stuck in gold, maybe you're stuck below there, and you just want to get better, you want to understand the ranked meta, and maybe you're not sure exactly how to understand the meta. In my experience, when it comes to new players and less experienced players in TCGs and trading card games, one of the big problems is just having a hard time understanding what the decks are trying to do. Trying to understand all the different kinds of decks, because you're playing and one match you're against one thing, one match you're against something completely different. It can be really hard to understand how to play around all these different decks. So this guide, I'm going to go through every deck in the game in about 10 minutes a really condensed guide to just walk through the whole meta. And I will link to this in the description, this text guide that we're using, which I've got all zoomed in. You can use this as a reference in the future. I believe for anybody who isn't that good yet, but you're trying to get better, I do believe it's mainly a skill thing. Of course, budget and luck both play into it. But if you can understand what the archetypes are, what the major kinds of decks are, and if you can understand the basic win condition of what each deck is trying to do, you're going to have a much better idea knowing what you're trying to do, what your opponent's trying to do, and then how to play around them. Problem is, if you don't know what your opponent's trying to do, or maybe even what you're trying to do, how do you play strategically? You don't really know what's going on. So hopefully this will help. I'm going to try to do this in 10 minutes or less, not counting the preamble. Let's go! First up. Oh, I immediately broke my guide. Hold on, let's move this image. Oh, god damn, I broke it even worse. All right, can I fix this? Do I have to restart the video? I think I fixed it. Okay, standard control war. This is wallet war. This is the deck that runs all of the expensive neutral cards and it feels really unfair, but it's not, it's not unbeatable. You can definitely win against this. Their win condition is is to hit you in the face with the big damage in the end game. They're gonna stall in the early game, block you with anything you try to do using all their removals, and then they're gonna hit you with Avatar of War, with Theriel and his God Blitz minions, with Hortuk, with the Demogorgons, maybe Salvatore. And then there's another version of this deck which is called Dragon War. And this is a similar build, but it uses more dragons. So Alborax is the big finisher here. It may or may not run Theriel. It's probably still going to run Hortuk and Demogorgons. And in this case, they're going to use Alborax, which gives them a special GP that they can do four damage with. So they can just hit you for four damage in the face over and over using the Breathe Fire GP. This win condition, control the board until you're able to play the Mana Surged Alborax. That's actually not correct. Alborax doesn't Mana Surge, but... They want to play Alborax, and they want to get that GP in order to finish you. So against both Control War and Dragon War, both Wallet War and the Dragon version, your best bet, especially as a budget player, is probably going to be to use a fast aggro deck and just kill them really quickly. Hopefully they draw their late game cards a little bit in the early side, and they just can't quite answer everything. Usually that's the best way. You also could try to use a combo deck, although Salvatore is going to make it tough. So hyper aggro, probably the best way. I'm going to be scrolling past all the explanations, but like I said, I'm linking this in the description. This video is just a summary. So next up, another war deck you should definitely know about, Olympian War. This is a really weird list. They're going to try to keep Olympians in their hand, and then they're going to use Village Vendor, which has an ally effect that buffs all the Olympians in your hand. So you have a ton of Olympian creatures in your hand in the Olympian tribe, and then you use Village Vendor's effect to buff those creatures over and over until the board is full of huge creatures. This one is pretty tricky. You either want to kill them quickly with aggro, or maybe you can disrupt them somehow. One card that's really good against this deck is the Eva Baroness of the Dead for zombie decks because it can transform their buffed creatures into 1-1 one, one zombies, which completely ruins it. Another really useful card against this is Shines on Us All in the Nature class, which resets every creature to its base version. It undoes all the stat buffs. Anything that either removes stat buffs or resets creatures is really helpful against this list. Otherwise, just trying to go fast and kill them before they can get set up is also viable sometimes, although 
it's tough to get ahead of them. But if you can, that's something to do. Now, next up, Zoo War. This is aggro. This is aggro war. I don't think I have to spend too much time explaining it. You know aggro war. The win condition is to hit them in the face quickly and overwhelm them with aggression so you win in the first five to seven turns, not letting your opponent have any chance to do anything. Best way to stop this is just some kind of mid-rangey deck that has healing. So zombies is excellent. Zombie decks, anything with Necroceptor and Cursed Obelisk is definitely really good. Otherwise, just, you know, you just basically need to defend in the early game. So, you know, a control deck that's not too slow, you know, I mean, aggro war, you guys know, it's very, very, very annoying when they go first with a strong aggro war draw. Now, the mage version, Atlantean mage, is really the first creature based aggro mage we've seen in a while, using tons of cheap Atlantean creatures to try to flood the board and trying to take advantage also of a lot of ward effects, which blocks spell damage and spell removal. Ultimately, what they want to do with this is get the Francesca Surging Signal out once they have four Atlanteans on the board, thus giving them a 15-15 God Blitz to hit you in the face. So this is another one where you can use any kind of mid-rangey deck, like Zombies is mainly what I'm thinking of, where you can just clear the board and keep rehealing. Otherwise, anything that has strong board removal, whether that's control nature, whether that's a control war style deck, the other option is to just try to out aggro them using something like hidden rush or aggro light or something that can maybe outplay them on the board. Aggro light could be good because your protected creatures can trade into their warded creatures. Ward doesn't do anything against protect. Next up, card draw mage. My camera is covering it up. Let's jump over here for a second. This is the traditional spell-based aggro mage deck. They're going to try to get some creatures on the board with spell boost and hit you in the face with a ton of spell damage using just enough removal to stop you from getting on the board using stuff like Star Shard Bolt and Tracking Bolt, trying to get a bunch of value from the Rune Moth and then ultimately finishing you with just a ton of burn damage from Worm Breath and then Pyrrhic Knowledge to help finish you off. They'll probably Warp Engineer the Pyrrhic to make the burst damage happen even faster. All they have to do is get you down to like 10 to 15 health. And if you're not close to killing them and you can't heal back up, they just burn you in the face and you're you're help, you're helpless. You can't do anything. So against this deck, again, a theme here, you either need a way to reheal yourself using some of the death or the nature stuff that lets you heal, or maybe war with Grand Hall and some other like leech stuff. Otherwise, you need to out aggro them or just put so much pressure on the board that they can't afford to burn you in the face. Make them use their burn damage as removal damage against card draw mage. It's it's it can be really tough, especially against a good player. But like the best defense is probably a good offense unless your deck has a ton of healing, which some decks do. And then lately we've seen the Arandian ramp mage. It's really not that different from Card Draw Mage. It's just even better since it has a Randian. If you're watching this, you probably have seen a Randian by now. It's a one-turn kill enabler. Once they have eight mana, they can use the pip, spend nine, surge a Randian, and then the next turn, a Randian gives them discounted spells along with a huge spell boost to kill you in the face. Against a Randian, you just need to win before a Randian gets on the board. Or if you play a Deception deck using Cutthroat Insight, for example, if you play Mayday Deception, you can use your Cutthroat to send a Randian to the bottom of the deck. So you need to disrupt a Randian. War decks can use uh, Salvatore or whatever the card is that lets you remove two spells from hand when it's surged. You must disrupt spells or get a Randian out of their hand. Deception is definitely one of the better matchups with the hand disruption for this. Otherwise, you're going to need to be aggressive because... You can heal to 30, you can even heal to 40 with Winter's Bounty, you might even heal to 60, 70 with Healing Light, and Arandian can sometimes still kill you. Definitely at 40 or lower, Arandian is just going to kill you a lot, so you got to either go quick or disrupt it. Next up, Healing Light, everyone's least favorite deck. One of the most atrocious decks in the game, because it's kind of a solitaire deck, where they just do their thing and you can barely interact with them. But making it worse than the Lost in the Depths Solitaire Mage bullshit that I always complain about, which is like a fast combo thing. This is a slow Solitaire deck 
which means that you're just sitting there while they do their stuff and half the time you can't do anything. The best way to beat Heal Light is to run a really aggressive deck and just kill them quickly. I really feel like otherwise you're going to be in this protracted battle of sadness. Another way to do it is to run Control Deception and use Charm and just take the uh, Profit of Progress out of their deck. Because the way this deck works, Profit of Progress is how they win. And most decks are going to run two of those. This list is actually a little out of date because it only has one. But yeah, if you can get the Profits of Progress out of your hand, out of their hand, and or keep them below 80 health, you really just want to be as aggressive as possible and try to kill them before they even get started. This deck is a huge nightmare. Much less annoying and a little bit like not really popular right now, but it still floats around is Aggro Light, Zoo Light. It just spams the board with a bunch of creatures that have Protect and or Ward, and it tries to go really wide, then using Asterius to get big buffs across the board, along with potentially Protective Benediction, Benediction or Radiant Dawn. Radiant Dawn is really cool, and it makes this deck a fun anti-wallet deck, because Radiant Dawn eliminates sleep from all your creatures so if the opponent uses demogorgon and tries to wall at you you can counter them with radiant dawn so this is a very satisfying deck if you find yourself losing to demogorgon one too many times and you're pissed off radiant dawn is a good answer unfortunately it's not going to be as good against ember oni it's really specifically good against demo so ironically the cheaper option is actually better against aggro light but my best weekend ranked I ever had was with Aggro Light, so I always will have a soft spot for this deck. I got 15 wins in Mythic one time. Feels good. Next up, Anubians. Okay, this is a great deck if you just want to go fast and piss off your opponent. You might have seen it by now. Basically, the Anubian damage uh, win condition cards are Priestess of Takat and Raving Necromancer. Uh, Priestess does two damage to the opponent's face every time an Anubian dies. Raving Necromancer does one damage to the opponent and heals you one every time an Anubian dies. If you can get multiple of those on the board, you can get yourself into a scenario where you're doing three, four, five, or even more damage every time an Anubian dies. And of course, the deck is all Anubians. Making it even better, a very popular anti-aggro card Pyramid Warden is also an Anubian, so you can even use your opponent's Wardens to activate your damage stuff, which is really, really cool. This is one of the best decks if you just want to go as fast as you can, hyper aggro, and punish some of those expensive control decks. Anubians never gets old, and uh, this is a pretty typical list using Land of Dead as a finisher. You might also see this with the uh, the Blackfire Fledgling, I think it's called. The dragon that's 3-2 and does 3 damage to the opponent's face when it dies. That's a really good card. You can also fit into this. There's a lot of different builds, and uh, many of them are fairly affordable. So Anubians is always a classic. Next up, my personal favorite deck for farming solar gold. And this is a wallet version, but there are great budget builds. You can build this list for 30 to 50 bucks, replace the Demogorgons with Ember Oni, take out Hortuk, put in uh, uh, the Seven Drop, Overseer of Vitality, the Feru Champion of Death. You can turn that into a second Bifurcating Curse because the key cards are very affordable. Swarm Lord, Nether Swarm Lord is one of the strongest cards in the deck, and that's very cheap. I think it's a dollar or less. Corpse Explosion, you need one of those for burst damage, also quite cheap. Obelisk, I think, is okay. Scepter is like five bucks. You can save up some play and earn and get it. Uh, a big one in this deck is Eva, Baroness of the Dead. I mentioned this when I talked about Olympian War. This card is so good against Aggro War and Olympian War. So Eva is definitely a must include. This is my favorite deck for easily farming the gold and diamond ranks because it just annihilates Aggro. You're able to heal back up with all of your zombie tokens, your 1-1 one, one, and 2-2 two, two leech creatures coming off of the Necroceptor, the Cursed Obelisks, and other stuff. It's just a really, really effective deck for farming those mid-ranks, and this has become my personal day-to-day -day, uh, daily rewards deck. My 10 games a day, if I'm not feeling like playing something in particular, this is what I go to. It's a really, really good archetype, honestly. I think it's pretty underrated. For some reason, people either want to run full control death or they want to run Anubians. 
But I think the mid-range Zombies is quite underrated. Probably the best mid-range deck in the game, along with Olympian War. Okay, we're doing good. Speaking of control death, basically wallet death. This is the full wallet build. They're just trying to wipe the board over and over. This isn't board wipe death. Board wipe death is mostly dead. There's like a classic deck that wipes the board so many times it's stupid. This isn't quite that. This is more of a control death because you still have some tempo with your creatures. You're running a lot more creatures in this build. Uh, Death Unborn is kind of fun. Death Unborn has the text set both players HP to 20. So if you're playing against Heal Light, this will undo all of their progress. They could have 79 health and you play Death Unborn right back down to 20. So Death Unborn, interesting tech. Let's keep moving. Rock Drake's one turn kill. And just again, this document, the link's in the description. You're not going to remember all this in the first time. I'm just, uh, This is a kind of an experimental video to run through all this. I, I, I don't know. You guys let me know if you think this is good or not. Rock Drake's is the most insane combo deck in the game. I don't even know how to play it, so I had to get Cargus to uh, help me out and, and basically give me the explanation for this one. Um, long story short, the Rock Drake's combo kills the opponent with a one turn kill combo using Bitter Endings, Necronomics, Over the Lion, and Anhotep, which is a card that you get from Bitter Endings. You basically make Over the Lion cost zero, put a bunch of creatures on the board, and do 31 damage with a classic combo, 31 being enough for a one-turn kill. They can also kill you in a bunch of other ways, depending how the match goes. There's a nice explanation. This is quite a complicated deck, so Cargus gave this nice explanation of how to play it in this doc. Check the link in the description if you want to see that. Thanks again, Cargus. Really appreciate that, bro. Food Chain, the coolest new nature deck. This is actually a really unusual deck. The goal being to play Bladefly, which puts three four-mana creatures on the board at once. They're all two twos, but technically they're four-mana along with a couple other wild creatures to get a wide wild board and then use a mana surged food chain, which transforms them all into more expensive creatures. So you have three blade flies, four mana creatures that all transform into six mana nature uh, wild creatures. And you end up with this really big board around turn five, six, seven, many decks which are not able to answer that will then just crumble under the pressure. This is from what I understand, a little bit inconsistent, but really fun when it works, and it actually is pretty effective sometimes. So definitely, if you want to play an aggressive nature deck, this is probably the most meta deck for nature that isn't insanely slow. Speaking of insanely slow decks, control nature, it's sus as hell. Some players seem to be able to make it work. Uh, shout outs to Meat Lord, and I think Surlio is another player who is doing really well with it. I tried to play it recently for like a week and I got pissed off. It's such a slow deck. It's so hard to make it work. It's so easy to lose if you make one wrong move. But basically, you're just trying to absolutely defend at all costs. Clear the board over and over. Keep rehealing and just be a complete dick. Don't let them do anything. Don't let any of their stuff matter. And eventually, they're basically out of cards, and then you have like an infinite winning combo at the end because your Wisps never run out. Curious Wisp continues to send itself back to the deck, buffing itself over and over, along with Zan Sidian and the Hortok and the Ember Onis and stuff. You just have this good late game to really lock things down. It's a very tricky deck to play. It's very slow. It's a high skill cap, and it's not even that strong. It's like a B-tier deck that's incredibly difficult to play, so definitely not recommended, but it is a thing. I have played, for better or for worse, Amazon Aggro, one of the fastest aggro decks in the game. Amazons are just, you dump them on the board, you attack face every time, you barely trade into anything, and you hope you win first. In spite of getting a few new tools, notably uh, Land Caller Captain, it's just not that good lately, or at least no one is playing it. So maybe Amazons could work in this meta, but everyone I saw who used to play it has stopped. So I included it in the guide because historically this has been a very common aggro deck, but I think it might be dead right now. Uh, I even said it right here. Be warned, this archetype is not that strong in the current meta. Next, Deception. We're almost there. Mayday Deception. Probably the coolest new deck archetype, at least conceptually, because it's like, if you ever played Hearthstone back in the day, it's kind of like the Shadow Step Miracle Rogue that was really popular way, way back, like 10 plus years ago, if I 
I think it was like 10 years ago. I don't know. Time time is hard to keep track of. Maybe it was like seven, eight years ago. But yeah, it's basically Miracle Rogue for God's Unchained Deception. The goal being to set up a combination where you can play Admiral Mayday like four or five times in the same turn and uh, you clone it so you can play it with two different copies and, and you just do a ton of damage to face comboing them down. It's a really complicated deck. The main thing to know is if you're playing against it, if you're able to get rid of Mayday, you should usually win, but they also usually won't give you a chance. So usually what you have to do is kill them before they pull off your combo. The other thing being if you can disrupt their hand, again, Cutthroat Insight if you're playing a different Deception deck and you can Cutthroat Insight and get rid of their Admiral Mayday. They're still going to have Trial Begin, so they're going to get it eventually, but basically disrupt the Mayday combo and kill them before they can pull it off. In the right hands, this deck is nasty. I mean, you could do a 20-minute video just breaking down the strategy for this deck, probably. Definitely an insane, insane deck. And then... Uh, this might be, I think this is the last one, Hidden Rush Aggro, a classic and truly evil deck. It's hyper aggressive, but the twist is that it keeps its creatures hidden. So you basically play strong shit, hide it over and over and hit them in the face. If the opponent's deck doesn't have good frontline and doesn't have good like AoE removal, like damage that doesn't have to target, they might have no way to interact with your deck. So this is a weird deck where sometimes if you have a really good draw, you can win on turn five or turn six and your opponent can't even interact with you. Hidden Rush is really evil. Definitely not a bad choice if you're looking for a deck to make a shiny version and just do 10 games every single day. Hidden Rush, it's a little weaker than it used to be maybe, but I think it's still doing pretty well from what I've seen. Definitely a deck that I usually get annoyed if I have to play against too many times in a row. And that's it. That's all the decks in the meta. It took me 20 minutes, so not quite the 10-minute walkthrough that I was trying to do. But I don't know. Let me know in the comments if that was helpful. This is kind of an experimental video. I put off recording this for like a week because I got sick and then I wasn't sure how to record it. And then there's all this stuff. So I decided just to rip it and do a recording today. Let me know if you thought it was helpful. I don't know. At any point, uh, at any rate, that's all I got. So thanks a lot for listening. Links are in the description. And I'll see y'all soon. Bye, 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 bye.